Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to do nuclear power, specifically fusion power, in the Universal Electricity mod pack. For those who don't know, Universal Electricity is uh, similar to uh, Industrial Craft, I suppose is the closest analogue, but uh, it adds a universal API for modders to use their electricity and stuff. But of course you need ways to generate that electricity, and what better way than with nuclear power? Now, if you've played around with industrial craft, and let's be honest, if you're involved in industrial, uh, sorry, universal electricity, you probably have played around with industrial craft, you'll be aware of the immense power of nuclear. Now, nuclear energy is in uh, universal electricity, but it works in quite a different way, uh, much more realistic, actually, in many ways, but uh, also a bit simpler. So I'm going to show you um, first how nuclear fission works. Um, there are other videos. Don't take this as a tutorial on nuclear fission. Look at this as fusion. Um, but in order to understand fusion, you need to understand fission first. So right, I'm going to move on over to my fusion uh, fission sorry power plant, which I've set up. Uh, that is this vessel here. Now, much like in real life, uh, the electricity is generated by turbines, and the turbines are moved by evaporating steam. The steam in, uh, in question is created by the uh, the heat generated from the fusion, fission, sorry. I apologize if I'm going to mix those up a lot. Assume what I'm looking at is what I'm talking about. So down in this uh, well here we've got the uh, fusion, fission reactor. You can see the recipe uh, is quite expensive. Uh, all these parts need... yeah, it's it's not a cheap thing, uh, but it's nuclear power, it's end game technology. And as soon as we add some uranium to this, uh, uranium rods that is, and these are made by uh, taking uranium ore here uh, and putting it in a centrifuge to make uranium and then putting it in a uh, stack to make the uranium rod. So I'll just see if... like that. And that will make you your uranium rod, which you then place into the fission reactor. Now the fission reactor will now start moving slowly. Um, is it moving? Yes, it is indeed moving very, very slowly. And you just heard it hiss there. That means it's generating heat. See, the water around it is slowly evaporating and driving the turbines. Uh, fission reactors are cheap, dangerous, and kind of nasty, and it's not really generating that much electricity. You can see my battery box here isn't going up a great deal. But that doesn't matter too much. It's, uh, it's fairly cheap. It's easy to set up. As you can see, it's a pretty compact setup. Uh, turbines aren't that expensive, I don't think. No, turbines are a motor and some steel plates, so it's just a lot of iron, really. Um, and also, the other important thing is make sure that the water which evaporates, which is any uh, any tile just touching the reactor, any t all these tiles around it here, uh, is fed by a not a source block. So the source you can see I've put in the corner here. So it flows down and into un underneath the uh, turbines driving them. Now one problem with fission reactors is that they do suffer from the northwest rule, which if you're familiar with Minecraft you'll know causes all sorts of weird things to happen in the northwest and not the southeast. So uh, I don't know if you've noticed it here, but um, stuff seems to happen. The water seems to evaporate first on the northwest and on the southwest, southeast, which means it's a bit inefficient. But, uh, but that's fission power. It's fairly simple. Also will violently explode. Not violently, um, but it will explode unless you use a control rod, which uh, I'll show you now. And you can insert these with pistons. There are actually very good tutorials out there. I'll link one in the description. Um, if I put the control rod there, you can insert these with pistons. The reactor should slow to a stop and stop generating power. There you can see it slows down, slows down, and stops almost stopped. Uh, you can remove the uranium by right clicking. You can only ever store one uranium at a time. You can see it is it's finite usage. And um, yeah, that's fission power. Now we're going to move over to fusion power. And this is a this is a fusion power plant if it will. I've created this completely by trial and error. There could be more efficient designs, but this is the most efficient design that I've found. Uh, it's same basic principle, using the fission rea fusion reactor to heat up uh, plasma which heats the water. I'm going to show you how to build one of these, but first I'll show you this one in action. So I just need to let the water flow. This means that there's water running underneath the turbines, and you can see straight away how quickly they're spinning. Uh, this stuff which looks like nether portal is plasma, superheated plasma generated by it. These blocks here are electromagnets. 
they are used to contain the plasma, and this glass is thermal glass. Uh, I'm not sure how to make thermal glass. Uh, it doesn't appear in the NEI interface, and as far as I can tell, there's no um, block which will create it for you, no machine. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll, if I find out, I will put in the link in the description, I'll put something up here um, showing the recipe. Anyway, you can see this is generating a lot of power. I'm just going to my back box here. My back box is already full. That was empty when I started. Um, so we're going to turn that off. Like that. And the other thing is with this, it's uh, rather than being powered, but uh, it's still going because there's still some power because the turbines are still moving. Uh, the other thing is, um, it's powered by deuterium, which is a uh, fancy name for heavy water. And deuterium is made by, I'll show you how deuterium is made actually. You take a bucket of water here, and you take one of these, which is a deuterium extractor. Uh, you put the bucket of water in there. It uh, goes along, slowly uh, filling up. Well, not that slow. It's faster than a furnace or anything like that. And then when it's finished, you'll get your bucket back, and you'll get some deuterium. As you can see, this stuff is uh, it's pretty cheap, but then you need quite a lot of it to go. Um, one deuterium thing will only last about, uh, it's about 20 seconds or so. I'm not sure of the exact amounts. Um, the other thing is the reactor needs ignition to start. It needs uh, power inside it to start. That's why um, when I turned, turn it off and stop the turbines going, it won't go because there's no power going to it anymore. As soon as I do switch, flip this switch, the, uh, the turbines will have water below them. It'll be heated up by the electromagnets, which remain pretty hot in the thermal glass. Power will flow. The reactor will ignite. I'm just going to shove this in there. Uh, it can hold loads. I don't know how much it is. Anyway, I'll show you now how to make one of these. One important thing I neglected to mention before is that you need to be wearing a hazmat suit uh, during this. That's uh, these here. They're, it's not uh, that expensive to make. Uh, they get, it requires diamonds, of course. Uh, the, and it doesn't. Basic circuits aren't diamonds. Uh, so it's actually fairly cheap to make. And this protects you from any radiation. It's not really an issue with the fusion reactor, but it is with the fission reactor. The fission reactor will uh, fuck your shit up. Okay, now, uh, now let's see how to build this uh, fusion reactor that we've got here. First off, the recipe. If you've already made a fu uh, fission reactor, it's not that expensive. You just put steel plates, which are steel. Steel you can make either using, I think it ta you will use the Railcraft steel. Railcraft's included in the Universal Electricity mod pack. Um, otherwise, it's just just follow the re follow any eye. If you've got any eye installed, follow it. And it's just one of those surrounded by that. So what we need to do is going to take this two blocks off the ground. This is important because we need to fit the uh, containment chamber thing. Uh, it's quite realistic. Real fusion reactors do indeed have these. And we're going to put the fusion reactor on the top there. We're just going to run some wire off here. I'm using endium wire. I'm not sure if it's the best wire. It's just, it seems to work. Uh, then we're going to take some electro electromagnets. Again, much like in, uh, in real, real uh, nuclear fusion. We take these and we surround the reactor like that, just on one side. Uh, we then take them out like this, and we build. So, so there's basically a sort of a track around the edge here, which uh, will fill with plasma. Uh, just an FYI regarding plasma, it is completely deadly. It will kill you in a single hit. It will kill an iron golem in two hits. Um, I will show you what happens when one of these things goes uh, properly critical uh, at the end of this video. But for now, um, we're going to we're going to show you how how this goes correctly. Um, the top and bottom, you're going to want to build using thermal glass. Uh, I'm not completely sure why this is, but I found that if you don't do this, then the ground starts to get irradiated, and no one wants that. Uh, irradiated ground will poison you, give you radiation poisoning. Um, it's unless you're wearing hazmat, but even then, it's it actually affects the block rather than the. Um, was in that particular coordinate, so anything you put in there will become irradiated. It's like, if you're familiar with, uh, familiar with Thorncraft 2, it's like taint. Um, I'm not completely sure how to get rid of it either. I don't know if you can in creative. I think just hitting it in survival will work. Anyway, so we've created this thermal glass here. Uh, this thermal glass and, th and thing, Taurus. Now, if we, we're going to just put some deuterium in there, so when we do finally start it up, it'll work. I've already showed you how to make the deuterium. You put it in the uh, deuterium extractor. So now it's loaded and ready to go. But of course it's not generating any power. Um, it's, it's just sort of sitting here. So we need to harness that power. So you need to take a block of your choice. This can be any block. I'm choosing to use stone, but you don't have to use stone. It, uh, it can really be anything. Um, we're going to build 
out one like this along these piers and these are where the water is going to fall down on we're then going to build up two in the corners here uh, these will just form it's a structure as it were if you were it's a thing. then we're going to take turbines now this thing will use a lot of turbines 20 turbines as a matter of fact you don't have to use all these turbines you can use fewer turbines if you like if you can't afford them though to be quite honest if you're at the stage where you can afford to build a fusion reactor you can probably afford several turbines they they aren't that expensive really um, I don't actually know I've not actually played universal electricity in survival mode I've just been feeling my way around it in creative Anyway, then we're going to want to put up uh, two walls on either side, like this. These will uh, just stop the water from falling out, really. And uh, like that, yes. Then we're going to put walls around the top, like this. Not the bottom, we're just going to leave the bottom open for now. Um, they go around, all the way around. Like this. And after this comes one of the most important parts, which is the regulation part, that is pistons. Make sure these are regular pistons, not sticky pistons. Um, I don't think it will actually matter, but uh, I, I just realised this is going to take ages. I'm going to cut ahead a bit now. OK, I've installed all of the pistons now. Uh, it's pretty important that... Uh, oops, sorry about that, there's a bit of lag there. I apologise for the uh, low frame rate, by the way. My computer is not a powerful computer. Um, so we've got uh, pistons here. Uh, it's important that there's five of them. These are what you will use to turn off the reactor. Now we're just going to take some water. Now you can do this however you like. Um, it, you need, just need to fill it up with water. So there's lots of water here. Uh, just make sure it is flowing and that it's all uh, source block at the top here. So there's no, uh, no flowing water up at the top. However, there is flowing water down here. Now we're going to take... I just realised we need to... Uh, just need to make a run around here. You saw the redstone on the thing before, which is used to control the pistons. Uh, so we're going to put a switch. Uh, where the switch is doesn't matter. I'm going to go put it actually by the uh, the output. We're just going to put a lever here, which goes there. Uh, we're then going to run redstone all around the edge, and uh, redstone repeaters on the corners, just so it um, just so the signal continues to go. And uh, yes, it will go all the way around here. Another repeater. Um, I, I can't be bothered to count how much redstone there is, so I may be overusing the repeaters. But uh, oh, I suppose it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, we're going to take it all the way along here. And we don't need to link it up here because, of course, uh, the lever does it. Now we throw that, and the piston stops throughout here. All the water has stopped. You can see if you stand down here, there is no water around. I'm just going to uh, turn that on now. Now we need to wire these up. Now this is much like we saw the fusion reactor earlier, or indeed my previous vessel over there. Uh, we just put wires in the top of these, uh, all the way around so that the power can come out, and uh, wire it across the top, like that and that. And then we take it over the top here, uh, sadly unlike uh, red power, which I'm sure will be coming any day soon. Uh, you can't occupy multiple spots at once. Uh, we're going to go down here like this, and uh, then we're going to run one off here. This is your output, basically. So we're going to put a bat box there. Uh, we're going to use the regular bat box, um, not the advanced one, just because uh, the more things can run on the regular one. So you can see there's nothing in there at the moment. Now we're just going to take an advanced solar generator here and stick it like that. That should power. That should give the uh, the reactor itself enough power. And when that powers up eventually, there we go. There goes the plasma. I can delete this now. You can uh, add the power anyway, and you can see straight away it's moving very very quickly. Uh, all the all the things are all the things are fired, and this will basically continue to fire forever, uh, well, as long as you add deuterium to it. Uh, and we'll go over to the bat box here uh, try not to place one of those and you can see straight away how quickly that's filling up that is that's pretty fast this thing is uh, more than enough and remember as well that this this is not all of its output some of its output is going back into it to uh, create the ignition but the thing to remember with uh, nuclear fusion is in theory it creates more energy than it uh, takes to start it up and that's that's what we're trying to do with nuclear fusion in real life uh, I don't believe anyone has achieved it on any meaningful scale yet. But uh, anyone who can, they've cracked the energy problem. 
uh, worldwide. So that's pretty much it. So I'll just show you this turning off now. Uh, it takes a while to slow down. It won't slow down immediately because the turbines are still spinning. Uh, they have uh, acceleration, as amazing as that sounds in Minecraft. Uh, so now it's stopped, and there's no more things. Um, however, if I turn back on, it goes straight back on. So it's it's fairly quick. It can provide power on demand, and it's powered by water. I mean, what what is not to love about this? This is this is amazing. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it actually. Earlier on, I promised to show you what would happen when one of these things explodes. Uh, it's it's quite spectacular. It's it's nothing like um, industrial crafts, but uh, it's 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 pretty impressive. Uh, the nuclear the fission reactors, by the way, are really really unimpressive. They're about four dynamite or so, but they do irradiate the ground. Anyway, when they add this deuterium, they should have enough power. There it goes. It basically creates an uncontrolled fission explosion, which I didn't realise it can cut through bedrock. Um, wow, that is, uh, okay, my frame rate's being destroyed by this fire. I did not realise that this could cut through bedrock. Um, that, that is a much more destructive weapon than I realised. Um, yeah, and it will destroy anything, and anyone. And if there were any, a any creatures in there, anything, it will kill them. So that's been uh, my spotlight tutorial, however you want to phrase it, on fusion power in universal electricity. I uh, might do more tutorials, depending on how this comes out. I I can't find any tutorials on the uh, assembly line, so I might do that. It's like Buildcraft, um, only incredibly inefficient, but really, really cool. So that's been uh, CD-ROM, uh, my tutorial. I'm uh, signing out.